There's many nations in Victoria 3 that would like to say that they are the greatest playing tall, but none of them shine as brightly as the Australians do, which pretty much have to be playing tall since they're stuck on that little island of theirs, which is pretty much the size of Europe. It's a, that's, that's aside from the point here, okay? So that's why today we're going to be starting as New South Wales. We're going to be confederating with the rest of these boyos here, and then afterwards we're going to be forming Australia. Take note, we're not doing amazing economically. We have no urban buildings that's right zero and we have a wheat farm and four livestock ranches so our, our entire country consists of four livestock ranches and a wheat farm it doesn't really get worse than that does it <laughs> unless we play you know as south australia which is just suicide nobody wants to do that do they hey on the bright side we have three barracks where we keep those policemen that keep everybody into check and two ports so uh yeah imagine not even having a construction sector university government administration nothing at all no wonder that we also have uh, illegitimate government as consequence. Let's actually restore uh, a proper government here. We can do that from the get-go and we can change some of our legislation. We have some pretty horrible legislation. Now boys, take note before we do all of that. Uh, if we get 6,000 likes on today's video, we're gonna do a brand new Great Britain run for the 1.5 patch with the Colossus of the South ULC where we're gonna show some really unique strats that could not be doable prior to this particular patch. And if you enjoy the content, consider subscribing. I'm trying to get to 190,000 subs by the end of the year which is fast approaching and in return of course i will i will promise to stop taking your wallets totally promise i can keep shut up okay all right let's uh let's queue up our nationalism first so we can start confederating with the other australian nations and we have market access issues in pretty much all of our territories which is understandable we can also establish a colony in uh, the south island of new zealand while in our case it's not really new zealand since uh, we start with the north island colonized by uh, new south wales did you guys know that his Historically, there was a very high likelihood of New Zealand being another Australian state. In fact, in Canberra, when they built Canberra, they have roads leading down to all the major capitals of the states of Australia. And there's another road that leads towards, um, towards New Zealand, towards, what is it, Auckland or something? Which obviously never came to fruition since New Zealand's a, an independent nation. But there was a chance in history that they might have been a part of Australia, which would have made absolutely no difference, really. Also, take note, guys, I, um, I just came out of the hospital today. So... So, um, I might still be a little bit fluffy and as such, um, uh, you know, I'm really wondering where is this 200,000 GDP coming from? Cause like literally a farm and, um, livestock ranch doesn't really scream 200,000 GDP, does it? All right. Speaking of, let's actually start building everything. We're going to need a logging camp. Let's build this up in uh, Victoria because we can have up to 11 logging camps here. And remember, we want to get uh, as much use of the uh, economy of scale as we possibly can since 11 logging camps means we get an extra 10% throughput for our wood. We're also going to need cotton plantation. So let's go with a cotton plantation in not going to go Victoria again. I'm going to go with New South Wales and of course a construction sector too in Queensland. Why not? Let's uh, queue this up. Alt click so it comes over to the uh, front of the queue and we are with the wooden building structures right now we're gonna stick with this it only consumes fabric and wood and right now we are producing nothing we're not producing fabric we're not producing wood we're not producing nothing okay so <laughs> we're gonna need to stick with this for a while then we switch over to iron frame buildings once we have some iron mines and everything else we are a part of the British market so technically it wouldn't collapse our economy switching directly to iron uh, frame buildings because being a part of the English market equates to having all all the goods that are in the uh, British market for use but still we want to have our own domestic produced uh, cotton logging camp iron and so on before we uh, start actually ramping up our economy we also have interventionalism which is surprisingly good most nations start with traditionalism in uh, 1.5 which is a big debuff since it offers minus 15% mappy or market access price impact which is one of the biggest debuffs in the game interventionalism is surprisingly okay agrarianism is not bad also laissez-faire is my personal favorite as well as cooperative ownership is also pretty decent if you don't have anything else you can work with but that being said that is fine for us let's see what other legislation we could change around here professional army would be good it's not a mandatory thing though for now home affairs uh national guard is not amazing i love to go for guaranteed liberties or secret police though charity hospitals oh hell yeah i'm going for this okay we're gonna try and get charity hospitals first and then we work our way from there afterwards at least we managed to 
fix up our uh, legislation. Now let's go ahead and get some extra money. We're going to be increasing our budget here. So taxation to very high. Eventually, as we progress in the campaign, we want to go down to very low taxation. We're going to cancel that tax on uh, grain, which is going to give us in return 500 authority points. which is a big deal. And we're going to set up a services tax and that's it. Nothing else. We also want to set up some of these uh, decrees. We're going to go with, say, where do I have most of my resources? That would be New South Wales. But right now, I don't really have any New South Wales for sure. We're going to set up the uh, resource industry. Before that, though, I'm going to set up uh, a road maintenance and social mobility in pretty much all the states because I want to get more uh, education access around here and I need some road maintenance. I need the infrastructure and everything else that goes alongside with it. Right now, we don't have any actual uh, buildings to get resources extracted. So the resource and the manufacturing in the industry decrees are basically useless for the time being. Of course, we will be changing that as we progress campaign though. I'm also going to improve relations with all of my Australian broskies so I can confederate with them afterwards. Wait, what? The UK is bankrolling us 10% of our tax income. That's not at all. <laughs> That's not saying much whatsoever, man. 10% of our tax income is like, bro. Actually, you know what? Um, I'm going to bring this down to normal taxation for now. I'm not really making much anyway, so it's not going to make much of a difference, especially since the Brits are bankrolling me for the time being. Or at least they were. Did they stop bankrolling me? Did they just bankroll me for like a second and then they stopped? Bro, what the hell is going on? I think we have frontier colonization, don't we? I believe so. Let's see. Oh, no, we have colonial resettlement. No freaking way. Okay, we can actually colonize after we uh, we uh, grow a little bit in size in that case. So that's good. That's a big plus for us. Hey, charity hospitals already went down to study phase of enactment. So we're pretty close to getting it. Actually. Speaking of getting schnapps, let's go ahead and get our very first Queensland based iron mine. The strongest iron in the world voted best iron by miners in the mines of Queensland. Who would have thought? I really hope the next DLC that comes out for Victoria 3 is going to be focused on the HRE or better yet the uh, Central European parts. I'm not saying that Prussia should get some awesome flavor, but if Prussia gets some awesome flavor, I think that a lot of people would be happy for that in my opinion. I feel like there's a lot of people that would just play the schnapps out of the game more if they have some Prussia flavored DLC. Let's improve this a little bit. Let's get two more cotton plantations since we're making quite a little bit of money from the cotton plantations right now. Same goes for the logging camps. Let's get two more queued up after. And the UK is bankrolling us again. Okay, cool. For how long? That's the real question. They keep bankrolling and then stopping their bankroll. I'm not sure if that's a bug or what the hell is actually going on here. And we went up to 74% success chance for charity hospitals and it still hasn't passed. It reminds me, that basically gives me flashbacks of my uh, Fort Siege ability. That gives me flashback from my sieging forts down in E4 for sure. There you go. 92 freaking percent and it still hasn't passed. I mean, come on, brother. Really? Oh, our colonial overlords, the Brits, are attacking the Chinese. Who would have thought the most standard thing that ever happens would happen again? Not me, that's for sure. Okay, we got charity hospitals. That's pretty good. Let's see what else we're going to go for next. Oh my god, we can make uh, Australia a theocracy or a monarchy for that matter too. I'm curious if modern Australians would uh, appreciate Australia being a monarch. Well, technically Australia is a colony, right? Kind of. They still have a monarch, basically, right? Oh, we don't have a police force, boys. Shall we try and get dedicated police force? Opposition, 32% from the rural folk, unsurprisingly. But uh, we also have a lot of endorsements, so let's see what happens. To arms, I will not be helping at all in that war. Screw that, bro. This is not my problem, Britain. You started this, you finished this. Oh, and they're fighting in India, basically. Oh, right. Looks like uh, the East Indies is doing all the heavy lifting for the British Empire here. I love that, you know, with the 1.5 war update changes they you can actually see the units moving on the map itself and like you can see them doing the invasions and the naval battles and all that it's really really cool it actually adds a ton of flavor to the game and it makes it a lot more replayable at least from my perspective i enjoy it way more like, like this okay looks like we're advancing through tibet you know what i'm actually going to queue up a food industry in uh, new south wales because uh, right now this is in pretty high demand so i don't mind just exploiting a little bit the fact that i am a part of the british market by building building stuff that's really expensive in the British market and as consequence making some money out of it, right? Wait, what the hell? We're getting 38% throughput from this? From Murray Darlin Basin. Oh my god, no shot, no freaking shot. This province has a modifier for, wow, okay. So we get agriculture, ranches, and plantation throughput now in the uh, New South Wales state as well as uh, construction efficiency reduction and infrastructure reduction. That's pretty awesome, man. I, I never even realized that. That is really really freaking good actually. Basically, we're getting a debuff in every single one of our provinces with the exception of New South Wales, I just realized.
because it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, these guys getting a hardwood output. What about South Australia? Are they getting anything? Iron and lead mine throughput. God dang, that is really awesome, man. Yep, that's it. Just two bonuses. Well, three South Australia, New South Wales, and Tasmania. Everything else is getting a deep oof. Big, big oof. I mean, that is very accurate. That is, uh, in fact, the most Australian thing I've seen in this entire playthrough so far. Hey, 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 boys. We got the nationalism. What can go wrong because of that, right? <laughs> nothing, nothing can go wrong. Shut up, okay? Since we're also very close to finishing intense agriculture, we're gonna try and boost that up so we get it quicker. And, of course, we're gonna go for mechanical tools, canneries, and we're gonna work our way towards me mechanized workshops. We want to get um, throughput bonuses, the more the merrier, since we don't have many states to work with right now, right? Now, we also got the journal entry for Federating Australia here. As long as we are at peace, we have the ability to unify two Australian colonies into one. So it's gonna take a few times before we unify the entirety of Australia. We need to have amicable relations and a greater GDP than a neighboring Australian or Maori country with the same overlord. So that means we got more GDP than these guys. We do. Since we also managed to pass that particular legislation, let's go for professional armies. So we have uh, those amazing Australian space marines that have been feared and have had legends written about them. Everybody knows about the colonial marines of Australia, right? Or as they like to call themselves, the Schmorpies. I don't know why they call themselves the Schmorpies. I don't think anybody knows why they would choose that name, which is, you know, weird as schnapps. But uh, hey, I'm, I'm not the one to judge here. Uh, it's not my place to judge anything of the sort, okay? It's not. Okay, let's see what else is extremely expensive. Like I said, groceries is pretty high in demand, as are engines. I cannot build that though. Oil, uh, we could get that from uh, whaling stations, actually, because we could build some whaling stations, but it's not a priority. I think just the groceries uh, and uh, iron mines would work for now. Let's get one more iron mine after we finish that grocery over there. I do feel like it's not super intuitive having to go to journal and then clicking decision to start federating with your fellow Australians though. Took me a while when I first started playing as Australia a year ago to figure out that bit. So hope you guys know about it. If you don't know, you know about it now. Eh? 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 You know about it. 63% success. Holy shit. How am I passing legislation so freaking fast? I feel like that's a pretty interesting bit. Like we don't have much population. We don't have much GDP, but holy shit, do we have really quick uh, legislation advancement. And we start with pretty decent to uh, legislation. I mean, look at this. This is all really great legislation. We even have properly tied women, slavery banned and everything. So it's really not bad whatsoever, man. Another 15% success chance? Hell yeah. Don't mind if I do. 79. Let's go over to study, please. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Explain to me how the standard of living in South Island is better than in my actual provinces. I'm struggling here with 8.9 in the north and I got 15 in the freaking south. They're not even producing anything. It's just one of those cases of uh, they're happy because they don't have anything so they, they don't know anything better than not having anything. And we went over to voting phase. Let's go professional troopers. Ah, the great peace treaty of nothing. Did they actually take anything or what? Genuinely confused. Nope, they didn't take nothing. So they white pieced. Okay, I mean, sure. Why not? That makes sense. Hey, we also managed to get the Brits to uh, suck up our debt, which is not bad. But that being said, it wasn't much anyway. It was like 200,000, so it's not a big deal. Now, because we are at peace, we can federate Australia. Boom shaka locos. God save the queen. We annex Western Australia. Hello, West Australia. And it's also an incorporated state, not just, uh, we don't have to incorporate it afterwards, essentially, right? Do they have anything right now? They have one whaling station and one livestock ranch and a barracks and a port. Oh my God, we have become massive, haven't we? Yep, we got all the good stuff. Hold on a second. These guys are protectorate of the Brits, right? Yeah. We need to wait for two years before we uh, do the same with the uh, South Australians and the Tasmanians now. So it's going to take a couple of years more before we fully uh, unify Australia or federate Australia, better yet. You know, it's pretty uh, weird how Australia was only colonized in the 1800s, considering how knowledge of Australia was around for a while. I mean, in the 1600s, Europeans knew about these lands, but they didn't really bother too much with them. I guess they had bigger fish to fry in, uh, you know, the new world over here. Oh, cultural exclusion. Okay, not bad. I'm working our way down towards multiculturalism. That would be definitely the goal for this uh, run. Become a proper Australian nation, multicultural Australian nation, where everybody is equally integrated, everybody's got the same rights, and everybody pays the same taxes to the Queen, okay? That's what it's all about here. It's about paying your goddamn freaking taxes. Dude, how is my legislation advancing so quickly? Again, study phase with cultural exclusion. Man, I'm genuinely wondering if Australia has some specific buff to make up for the fact that it's, you know, a backwards penal colony, essentially, right? I think uh, New South Wales was the first colony, wasn't it? 1788, if 
if I'm not mistaken, is when they established it and then they slowly just started uh, getting more people in here essentially, right? Yeah, as far as I remember correctly, Captain Arthur Philip was the, with, with the first fleet, arrived with 11 ships and uh, established the first colony in New South Wales, 1788 January. And truth be told, it did have a lot of uh, convicts. It was like a thousand settlers and majority of them were convicts. So yeah, you could say that the origins of the Australian nation might have a little bit of a hazel um, theme to it. But hey, hey, those people don't represent everybody, okay? Shut up, you be quiet now, how dare you? Okay, now switching over to atmospheric engine pumps is a massive deal since uh, we have all the tools and the coal available to us from being a part of the uh, English market. And let's also give out increased uh, that one. Actually, we don't need any of these here since um, we're poor as shit, so we cannot really afford it. Let's build one of these though. We really wanna get a government administration because minus 27 bureaucracy right now is 27% tax waste, which is a massive freaking amount for us. And we got rid of Australian unifier modifier, meaning we can do uh, this once more. Schnaggadabobadaboo. Van Diemen's land is ours. Hell yeah. Again, it is an incorporated state and it has 177,000 GDP. That's really not bad. Holy shit. Uh, so that means I'm going to do this then. Cancel this bit here. And I think I'm going to cancel. Do I need road maintenance? I probably do. Don't. Market access is horrible here. What the hell, man? Is it because they have an iron mine and a barracks? Really? Wow. Oh no, we have a modern Australian government. I mean, uh, unacceptable government. Oh no, I forgot to actually improve uh, with these guys here. The United Tribes, also a protectorate of the Brits. And I believe they are Maori, so we can confederate with them, right? The church wants us to change to legal guardianship. Hails to the no. I like my women giving me 5% workforce ratio, man. That's a big deal when you have no population. We got 400, sorry, 800,000 people here. Here, and you want me to get rid of 5% workforce? Are you crazy right now? All right, now seeing as our taxation is doing pretty good, let's uh, change on over to iron frame buildings about time. Oh my God, people really want to become a monarchy, don't they? All right, you know what? I'm going to do it. I don't want to have fuck around with these people. So, um, yep, unfortunately, we're going to have to click yes this button. Who needs democracy anyway, right? I mean, democracy is clearly very overrated, boys. And of course, now we get a revolution trying to preserve democracy. Are you kidding me right now? <laughs> One day, boom, hello, scuba, the boss. Okay, I think now we can actually form Australia afterwards because we annex Kauna. No, we cannot. We have actually have to annex South Australia too because that's the full state. So two more years, boys. Hey, the revolution disappeared. That's cool. Not sure if it's because we annex Kauna and people were leaning towards um, monarchy more, but I don't know. Maybe. Fortunately, we do have massive issues with bureaucracy. 44% tax waste is a big deal. So um, we're building up our government administration building to mitigate that right now. We also need to get more construction construction sectors. So let's go ahead and uh, out click three of them in uh, Queensland where we actually have population to fill up those places. Hey, we managed to do a journal entry road to progress. So we can get 20% loyalists from standard of living increase, or we can get approval for the industrialists. I'm going to go for the loyalists. Thank you very much. People actually love us. Look at that. We got 111,000 loyalists and only 108,000 radicals, mostly in Queensland. That's mostly because of market access issues, to be fair. Well, the rebels pushed our hand once more and we had to cancel our progress towards a monarchy. It's not the end of the world though. We got bigger fish to fry here. Speaking of bigger fish, we got the biggest of fish in our government, the industrialists and the intelligence. Yeah, so we got some decent legislation we can try and vouch for now, such as, um, for example, universal suffrage wouldn't be so bad to get. Laissez-faire is probably the one we should really be getting for, but 35 opposition and only 17 endorsement is an issue. I feel like we might not be able to pass this through. Oh, almost forgot. Let's federate once more, this time with South Australia. We're going to wait one more time to get the United Tribes before we actually form Australia, even though we are able to form Australia. Right now, we're waiting tactically so we get, uh, you know, these boys integrated and incorporated as well. Oh, we also got Australian Federation, which gives us some prestige, and we become a dominion of the Brits. So um, that's better, I guess, than what we were before. Oh man, I'm going to have cancel this, aren't I? Yep, 0% chance of getting it. That's really poo poo. Let's try and get another legislation in that case. Public schools. Oh my lord, don't mind if I do. This way, I get rid of the uh, conversion and the power that the religious groups have and I uh, I get that juicy assimilation, right? And of course, the religious people are going to be rebelling. Why wouldn't they? Finally, we also got one of the best technologies we can ever get. Railway transport
transportation is going to be of huge help here. We've really been struggling with our infrastructure. We only basically relied on uh, ports mainly to get stuff around. But now railways, that is a real game changer in any of your games in Victoria 3, not just as the Australians, obviously. And for the last time, we federate with uh, the uh, United Tribes, which means now we can actually form Australia. You guys ready? Let's get a dumb roll, shall we? Da -da 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 -da. That's uh, the the noise that the Australians make when they unify. Don't ask me why I'm. They're just weird. Okay, we're gonna get some prestige from that, and we now have a much cooler name. This is way better than New South Wales. Wait, we can have opium plantations in Tasmania. Holy mother, bro! Tasmania just became my favorite new state right there. And we also can get gold mines, which I haven't really been building that many of. Let's uh max out the gold mines, I guess. Definitely also need at least one more government administration building though. So let's get that done too. And we don't have any inf- Oh my god, what is going on in New South Wales, man? Holy mother. Okay, we need to get some uh, railways in there first. Put this in here in the queue, but of course, railway and Calicius Altius Maximus. We gotta get New South Wales back on track with its uh, market access. Same goes for South Australia right after. Balungan wants to ally. I don't even know who that is. Is that like one of these uh, smaller nations in Indonesia? It's gotta be, right? No, if I'm ever gonna get an ally, it's gonna be somebody big like uh, the French, who are obviously never gonna gonna ally a small insignificant nation like me. <laughs> I don't know, someone man, anybody else except Bulunga, is what I'm saying. Speaking of, I'm gonna cancel my interest and I'm gonna set it up in South Africa. Maybe we can start expanding. Actually, let's set it here. Maybe we can get the uh, Madagascar. That definitely is gonna be on my list to, to do here. They got 22 battalions though. We have seven battalions. Yeah, you know what? Cancel that. Never mind. Never mind. Last time I'm canceling, I promise. Let's go with the old Yemeni strat since uh, these nations do not have any units, any ships, nothing of the sort. So it's essentially a free kill. Oh, look at that. The Hudson Bay Company became a Dominion also. I'm guessing they're going to try their best to unify the uh, northern bits of uh, North America. And once more, we have one of the weirdest treaties. I have no freaking clue what just happened. Is that actually a bug? Like, is that actually a freaking bug? Why does it say Giuseppe Garibaldi just left Great Britain? What? Isn't he Italian? I'm guessing there might be a few issues with this patch still. Seeing as we have very low pops, water to boiler is an absolute must for us to get. And... Great Britain's bankrolling randomly us again. And they stopped. They literally bankrolled us for a second. Okay, now they're bankrolling again. How long is that gonna last for? Two seconds? Please last longer than two seconds? 6,000 is actually pretty freaking good. Holy shit. I'm also gonna try and get a little bit of everything here, like a sulfur mine, uh, whatever mine. Essentially, I wanna have my own industry that I can rely on in case I get kicked out of the British market at some point, which likely might happen. Just trying to play it safe here, boys. That's it. We're just trying to play it safe. I really wish the AI stopped doing that. It's so annoying when they bankroll me for a second, then they stop. It gives me the false impression that I'm actually going to have money. And the colonization of South Island is done. It means we can incorporate these bad boys now. 100,000 population and 500,000 GDP. Really not bad for just this tiny little island here. Attempt number three, laissez-faire is free. I just had to say it in a way in which it rhymed, you know, it's a uh, part of the contract. Oh boys, the big war is happening here. There's a diplomatic play between the Prussians and the Austrians. Who is going to be the ultimate German leader? Leader here. German leadership play humiliation and conquest of Tyrol against Austria. And let's see who's going to be helping which. Okay, Prussia seems to be by itself. Pretty much just the uh, various German nations and Austria's by itself too. So it's going to be interesting. It's basically 1v1. They have 138 with 35 and they got almost double that plus a lot more GDP. So let's see. Let's see. Prussia did grow though. 21 million GDP by the time they started the war is nothing to be laughing at. That's for sure. Oh, Misty eyes of the blue mountains in australia what okay let's go water tube and condensed engine pumps thank you very much this is what it's all about boys this is literally what it's all about here now getting these water tube boilers means we lose significantly more population i mean we use significantly l less population which can be used in other parts of our industry of course we also managed to get up to study without any revolution for less affair that is impressive that is actually freaking impressive right there i love to see the Prussians making gains over the Austrians. I mean, I'm totally not taking sides here. Clearly, I'm not. Uh, if anything, I would be on the side of Austria because it sounds like Australia, right? Austrian Empire, Australian Empire, almost the same thing. But as an impartial, objective observer of the situation, I'm uh, just happy to see that Prussia, they win. They actually win. I think they won, boys. I think they actually freaking won. They got an alliance with Württemberg. What an amazing ally. Wait, no, they didn't win. The war is over, but they didn't get to roll, though. Was that a 
stalemate? They lose? What the hell happened, bro? I think they maybe managed to get leadership, but they didn't manage to enforce their demands on getting T-Roll as well from the Austrians. Could be. Another great uh, technology, nitroglycerin is going to help us again with uh, the fact that we have very few population. Take note, though, by switching over to nitroglycerin, we do get a higher mortality rate for our workers, up to 30% mortality for laborers, for example, which is a big deal, and it costs explosives, but we do have explosives actually in our country and in our uh, market for that matter and we also don't give too much of a snaps about our people passing away you know these things happen it's just the natural way of life okay what did you expect would happen when you immigrate to this country you think you'd get roses and daisies in your lap and you're gonna be schnapple duping around and getting all the juice and stuff no that's not what's going on here okay now go back to your mind and work your ass off before i whip out the, the whip surely they had whips in australia right they must oh yeah baby now why is less a fair so important well first off you get the extra company which is a big deal but not only that loan interest rate minus 25 percent is huge together with 75 percent private construction allocation again is massive so it's gonna allow us to snowball so much more now i think that's our first company isn't it yes sir and it looks like tasmanian gold is the only one we can get right now that's fine it's gonna give us more minting and loyalists from standard of living increase which is pretty decent in my opinion eventually we can get a lot more companies here and i'm gonna be gunning for stuff that boosts up my production a little bit more like the combined australian metal corporation or even actually the birth rate is not bad since i do need more population now that i think about it we only have two million right now which is not really that much is it we have been growing though considering from the, the beginning when we had what like a few hundred thousand right we have been growing we have half a million australians 228,000 portuguese now clearly all of these portuguese are immigrants right as are the african Caribbeans, the Irish, and the English, and so on. Oh, thank God the Americans sided with the Brits on the uh, Trucial Revolution revolt. Whatever would we have done if uh, half the world didn't join to crush these uh, Bedouins with zero troops? All right, so we've uh, slowly been uh, increasing our economy. Right now, we have our main industry revolving around our mines. We've got 10 gold mines with another 11 gold mines queued up afterwards. We're prioritizing our railways first to get the market access everywhere, and then of course we're gonna build the rest of the gold mines that we can build so from an economic perspective we're actually doing pretty okay we're increasing our standard of living too so that eventually we get more people to migrate to our lands it's slowly but surely increasing you can see that over there the graph shows that we've been getting migrants every single month and it hasn't stopped yet which is a good thing because we need people to be working in our mines and at the same time we are definitely assimilating everybody still have a lot of portuguese 380,000 portuguese but we got close to a million Australians. We're getting 2.7k Australians converts to per month converts that sound like they're converting to Australian religion or something. <laughs> the negative part is that we've been failing getting public schools repeatedly so um, hopefully we manage to get that at some point. Now we also have uh, queued up some furniture manufacturers and some motor industries because we need motor industries to get more transports out as well as furniture manufacturers is just really high in demand right now. It's also going to increase our standard of of living in our economy so we need to build these furniture manufacturers they're pretty fast to build as well which is a, an added benefit if you ask me i was also wrong about the german leadership earlier it, it seems like the prussians lost the previous war and uh, they're trying to get german leadership again as are the austrians for that matter so uh fingers crossed hopefully the uh, prussians win this totally not biased at all guys not a single little bit trust me in the words of the famous australian intellectual uh ned kelly you Eureka, boys. <laughs> totally an intellectual. Very, very. Definitely not an outlaw, that's for sure. Now, we can build some more textile mills and furniture manufacturers to improve our economic output, but we gotta wait a little bit. We've reached our... We've, we've, uh, yeah, we gotta, um, we gotta wait for it to pay off a little bit of our debts, let's say. Seeing as I'm not really doing any colonization for the moment, I'm canceling colonial affairs so I don't lose the extra bureaucracy. We can use that extra bureaucracy to improve our institutions instead of just wasting it on having colonial resettlement when we're not really using it at all and check it out guys the english are losing against this small little 
insignificant Jisazmalar because they have no way of accessing the province. Now, why did the AI attack this in the first place if they cannot access it? That is just stupid. And as such, Jisazmalar just gained its independence right now. That's um, it's a bit of a loophole that people can take advantage if you ask me. Speaking of advantage, we've taken advantage of taxation and we went down to a very low taxation. We can afford it now because our economy has significantly improved, especially after building all of those extra gold mines and we still have a few more that we can build. And by going to very low taxation, our standard of living is increasing. Check it out, 14.5 overall. We actually have the worldwide number one standard of living right now, which is a massive deal. Champasak doesn't count since they're a small and significant little schnapple dupe over there. We're the only big nation that has this standard of living. This means that a lot of people will want to migrate to us. Look at that, 3.4 mil and growing from migrants. We've had migrants from North uh, Germany. We've had migrants from South Germany. What the hell? The Austrians actually won the war, didn't they? Wow. Okay. Well, that explains the migrants, I guess. Oh, look at that. My beautiful Romania just formed. Curious if you guys want me to do a new Romania video for Vicky3 because in 1.5, they actually received a lot of flavor, including the ability to form the United Principalities, which is the precursor to Romania, making it a lot easier to form Romania in the process. And they got like silk in the provinces here as well now, which is a really good trade good to have, which they didn't before, even though historically Romania did have silk in this area for a very long time we can also now get our secondary company so we have the tasmanian gold what else do we need here we could instantly establish the victorian paper combine which would get to 100 prosperity fairly quick actually you know what i don't mind doing this because i also want to get the bonuses for paper uh yeah let's do that let's establish this and then we can change it to something else later down the line bureaucracy plus 10 percent is a pretty big deal as well for now and surprisingly we actually got 33 percent support for right of assembly this might freaking pass this time what that would be literally the fifth time i tried this man look at this we got 21 opposition for it and 19 support better than before we used to have like 45 percent opposition before so this is way better now hey yo we're maintaining 12,000. no we're not we were maintaining 12,000 for a few moments there uh yeah no i'm still gonna be building some more construction sectors though because we are very far behind with our construction and i know what you're thinking you're crazy looty you're barely surviving economically it's fine you need to invest to get more out of your country that's how it works especially when you start as a really small nation you really need to do everything in your power to grow to a size where you can actually stand up to the big boys otherwise you're always going to be small and insignificant and people going to be bullying you around if you don't oh yeah baby guaranteed liberties is on the freaking way now all right so we did that because we want to get guaranteed liberties check it out boys revolutionary and secession progress speed minus 10 percent as well as radicals and loyalists standard of living adjustments by five percent is a huge freaking deal this is by far the best legislation you can pass the moment we got this passed we want to advance it to level five instant if possible so i was wondering why the russians are at war with ching when they had a defensive alliance and then i checked and apparently it's the german war the germans have brought in the russians they brought in ching on their side so this is essentially a global war it's not just the german leadership war anymore about time we also got our dynamite so we can switch over from nitrogen glycerin not only does dynamite give more products extracted so check it out plus extra 12 20 sulfur from two mines but it also doesn't have the immortality for engineers laborers and machinists that nitroglycerin has it's basically the same product only difference is that it's not as dangerous really and it produces more it means we also got our industrial boom done so we can get this particular modifier to make even more resources wait what we can get a third company already hot damn minus 10 percent radicals from standard of uh, living decrease yes please pretty pretty please for that matter <laughs> do i need to say more boys do i need to say more i'm already queuing up uh government administration buildings and the main goal is that we're gonna max out this bad boy here so let's check what our institution can go up to we can have up to minus 20 percent radicals from standard of living and plus 20 percent loyalists from standard of living so of course that's just 116 bureaucracy yeah we're gonna get that extremely fast that is a priority for sure oh boys we got poor love laws on the way so the reason i'm getting pull laws is because um well first off i obviously don't care too much about the 20 percent welfare payment i can afford it considering that it lowers the political strength of people that are receiving welfare so their opinion is based
basically irrelevant as consequence, right? And we're just such an amazing place to be living in. Like right now, 1877, Australia is by far the best nation to be living if you're a citizen of uh, 1877 Victoria 3, huh? Since we managed to get our institution to level 5, we got the Metropolitan Police and we get 33% of servicemen pop become more loyalist. That's a pretty significant amount because we got a lot of servicemen, clearly. And speaking of, let's check our institution. So we got level 4 for the uh, home affairs, level 5 for military, I mean uh, for police. We need to get our health system up. I just realized I forgot to invest in this a little bit more. <laughs> So yeah, let's uh, pass some legislation that lets us get up to level 5 for the health system and for that matter for the uh, education system. I mean, check it out. Slowly but surely, we're getting up with our standard of living 15.1 fourth in the world. Okay. Okay, it's just the small little nations here. That's not even fair. You shouldn't. We're still the best one. Okay, shut up. And <laughs> we got 1 million loyalists compared to 277,000 radicals with a population of 4.3. So that is really, really juicy right there. If you look at the world map when it comes to standard of living it's just us and the british pretty much that have a green everybody else is on the red somehow i hope you guys enjoyed today's australia run and if you did don't forget to leave that like so we can do the british empire once more and until the next time check out this awesome prussia vicky 3 video and i want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons channel members and twitch subscribers i would not be able to do this without all your support